101 Jams, you're inside the Power Hour, and as promised, I have the pretty beast, Raquel Miller, on the phone. Raquel, how are you? I'm good. What's up? How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. First off, let me thank you so much for calling in. I know you uh, had a rigorous workout today, and, you know, how was that workout today? Thank you so much for having me. The workout was good. I'm here in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center. Woke up to a bunch of snow, you know, but you still wow. got to go put in that work, but I'm, I miss California. I'm ready to go home. I know. I know. I <laughs> bet you do. I bet you do. Now, what are you training? Do you have a fight coming up? Um, so unfortunately with the coronavirus, the oh, fight that yeah. I was supposed to be on got canceled and um, all of the cards in California. So, you know, I'm just staying ready so I don't have to get ready, but I don't have a fight right now because we're waiting to see what happens with the postponement and when they're going to allow the shows to go forward. Yeah, they they um canceling a lot of stuff due to this coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, serious out here. Yeah, it's real serious. Now, how are you keeping yourself safe from that? I mean, are you washing your hands and doing what the uh, CDC is telling us to do? Yeah, I mean, I already washed my hands, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we I should be doing in the first why place, people right? I always <laughs> washing their hands, but, um, you know, I'm doing my part, just, you know, making sure that I extra wash my hands and I keep me some, you know, hand sanitizer right. and just do the stuff that you should have already been doing yeah. before all this nonsense exactly. happens, you know, and just doing what I've been doing. I think, I'd like to think I'm a clean young lady, so I don't know <laughs> See, what more I can do. Right? <laughs> hygiene is everything. It should be over. Exactly, yeah. right? So, <laughs> after now, this is over, still wash your hands. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, you call yourself the pretty beast, right? And uh, you yes. are very attractive. What made you put well, choose you. boxing? You're welcome. What made you choose boxing for your profession? Um, to be honest, I always, I've been a tomboy my whole life and I always used to fight, 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 fight. Everybody, boys, girls, when I was growing up, <laughs> I used to fight a whole lot. Right, that was so going to be I my really next just, question. Yeah, I really <laughs> just wanted to challenge myself. To, and, and Okay, two things. One, I wanted to challenge myself to see if I was able to you know, really step it up and take it to the next level and not just do anything that's some street fighting. And then also it's something that just always resonated with me. Like Christy Martin, she was doing her thing. My right. mom loved boxing. Mike Tyson was like the absolute truth. And every time I would watch Christy Martin do her thing right before Tyson fought, I used to literally get butterflies in my stomach and just be like, one day that's going to be me. So I just felt like I was always born to be a fighter. Yes. And I'm just following my path. Right now you're undefeated, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 10 and 0. Wow. Now, if you wasn't boxing, what, what would you see yourself doing? Um, so about I wasn't a boxer. I do have a nonprofit. It's called Ladies in Power. Um, I probably would be helping kids doing some type of, you know, youth work or I really want an animal shelter. I'm like, sometimes I have like a bunch of stuff I want to do in my life, but I absolutely love animals. So if I wasn't working with animals and children, I would be an attorney. I was a law clerk before really? I got really heavy into boxing. So I really don't think that you have to limit yourself to anything. So when I'm done boxing, I might pick up and go back to school and, you know, get my, you know, get my bar and, you know, do my that's, thing, go and, you know, pass the bar and become an attorney. That's Who really knows? Good. That's really good. And maybe do some part-time modeling because I saw your pictures. Maybe, on, uh, maybe so. Yeah, maybe I saw, <laughs> I saw your pictures on IG. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You definitely got that. Now, the biggest question our male listeners might want to know, are you <laughs> are you dating anyone? Uh, no. So, I'm not dating. I am single. Um, I get that question asked pretty frequently. But right now, I'm really just focusing on myself. 2020 is about falling in love with yourself and doing the things that make you happy. And, you know, that way you're not looking for nobody to make you happy. You're already happy. So, you're just, you know, hoping somebody adds to your happiness. But I'm not currently taking applications. <laughs> I'm now, just focused on myself. Right. And, um, you know, living and enjoying life and, you know and I guess if the right man comes along I'm not going to say no but that's not really my focus right now right. but now you never what? know what would be unless, the right unless it's um Kyrie Irving? That's what I was gonna, yeah, yeah. Now I was gonna say, does he have to be an athlete or you know? No, he doesn't have to be an athlete. Um, I may I really prefer him not to be an athlete. Right. It's really hard dating athletes, and people don't really probably realize that. But no, he just had to be smart, love to read, and have some things to teach me. Another question, and I know people are gonna want to know this: Clarissa Shields. You guys been going um, back and forth on uh, social media a little bit. What's you know, this that? is how did that get twenty twenty? All I'm saying. It's 2020. Let's make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Like the talk is treat. Like you know, you saying all of this. I'm running. I'm this and that. You know where to find me. You know where I'm at. You know we've had a long, extensive history. Hopefully, we can make that fight happen this year. But you know, it is what it is. I'm out here doing my thing. But if you're looking for me, here I go. Yeah. And that's that on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you so, know, we definitely. But I'm going to get that title since that's. Oh, excuse me, not to no, you're off, right. But, but okay. I'm about to go get that title because you know that's supposed to be a prerequisite that I'm supposed to have. But you know, it's all good. So whatever I got to do to make that fight happen, trust me, I'm doing my part. So if I got to go get that title, you know, checkmate, no problem. But. I'm out here. Let's get it. Let's Talk do it. Talk is cheap. We definitely, you know, looking forward to that fight happening. You know, yes, sir. That's going to be an awesome matchup. I mean, it I, is. I think, um, you know, women's boxing is, is really 
making some strides now. Absolutely. The women are, really are doing their thing. Yeah, you guys are doing your thing, putting your thing down. So I would love to see that fight. Definitely. And then, you know, while we're talking about the female boxers, I just want to give a shout out to all of the women fighters, especially my best friend, Tierra Brown. She's a police officer and an amazing undefeated fighter fighting out of the D, um, D.C. area. And, you know, it's just all about each one, teach one, each one, bring each other up because it's enough room for us all to shine. It and, is. you know, I'm cool with everybody until we get in that ring. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then after that, we can go right back to being cool. Right. <laughs> now, what's it like stepping into the ring? You know, I never stepped in the ring. I, you know, I don't. But uh, what is it like? Now, when you're in there and you hear the crowd and everybody's screaming and your coaches is telling you, you know, what to do, is your mind really listening to the coach like, you know, okay, yeah, I hear you, but I'm going to throw this right hook instead of this jab? I mean, what goes through you, your mind in there? You know, like, honestly, the longest thing in a fight is the build up to the fight is when you're in the locker room it's when you're getting your hands wrapped it's when you're walking to the actual ring you're like you know okay let's do this I mean when you first do it you're like super nervous of course and you're just like damn all of your limbs feel like they don't work but then as soon as that bell rings you know, it's kind of like it just snaps into go mode yeah. and it's just time to go. And in the crowd, ironically, you don't really hear much of the crowd. All you really can hear from me, at least, is voices that are familiar to me. Okay. Like I can hear my coach. I can hear my dad. I can hear my sister. Only voices I hear are really the voices that I know. And you know what I'm saying? While you're in the fight, it's almost like going in slow motion, but going really quick at the same time. Right. right. If that makes sense. That's cool. It's like, yeah, I, it's like I've a little warrior dance. Yeah, I've <laughs> always wanted to know that. Like, you know, you, you see the coaches yelling and everything. And I'm like, I wonder if they actually paying attention to that. Yes, you are. It's almost like you're programmed to it. You know, it's like muscle memory. It's like you guys have rehearsed these drills so many times. So when he calls certain things out or she calls certain things out that they hear, I mean, that they see, you hear it and you instinctively try to, you know, make it happen because you guys have kind of rehearsed this same thing like a performance. You guys have rehearsed it so many times. Now it's just, you know, you're an actor or you're a performer and now it's time to do, you know what I'm saying, what you practice to do. Now, every once in a while, I try to encourage people to eat a little healthier. Um, that's because I had a heart attack a few months ago. So I'm, I'm on a mission to encourage, you know, people to eat healthier, live a healthier lifestyle. You know, I feel it's important to take care of, you know, your body and eat the pro- get the proper nutrition. What yes. is your diet like on a daily basis? Or do you um, first, do you stick to it or do you change it only when you're training or do you just stick to it 24-7? Um, thank, first, thank you. And I'm really happy that you're okay. You know, I'm sending you thank love you. and light. Thank you're you. welcome. Um, secondly, boxing really changed my life in the ways that I eat. So I'm a vegetarian now. Um, I just recently switched from pescatarian and I try to keep, you know, eating health is wealth. And a lot of people don't realize that, especially when we're in the minority communities, but it, it needs to become a lifestyle thing as yes. opposed to kind of like a, a fad. It can't be like a diet. You can't say, oh, I'm going to diet and lose 20 pounds and then go right back to doing the same thing. Yeah. So I pretty much stick to a clean diet. I try to drink like a gallon of water a day. I try to make sure that I juice one of my meals per day, which is generally like breakfast for me because it's easier on your system when you juice one of your meals. So I just kind of put a bunch of vegetables and fruit and I don't have no rhyme or reason why I do certain ones, but it's kale, it's spinach, it's, you know, grapes and, you know, strawberries and, you know, I do chia seeds. I might do some um, fennel seeds or flaxseed seeds, but I try to make sure that I keep some vegetables in my diet. I keep some fruits in my diet. I make sure that I'm drinking water. I don't drink soda. You know, my family has health issues. You know, my mom has high blood pressure and things like that. And it's very important to make sure that, you know, don't wait until you have an issue. Take care of it now because a lot of the things can be alleviated can be alleviated just from how you eat, you know, and if you're going to have some bad food, then do it in moderation. But it's important for you to at least, I try to stick with the 80-20 rule. And I'm having a really bad week, a 70% clean food and, you know, 30% to where you don't feel like you're in jail with food. You know, people want to enjoy food, but you know, just because it's good doesn't mean it's good for you. Exactly. Because, I mean, that's what led up to mine. Uh, I was uh, eating a whole bunch of nonsense and just, Mm -hmm. you know, my day starts at like 1.30 in the morning and I don't shut down till about eight, nine o'clock at night. And um, I think I ate a whole bunch of Chinese food and whatever I was eating. And I laid down mm-hmm. and went to sleep, woke up about 1.30, 1 45, and it was it was going down. It was going down, man. It was crazy. So now I'm on a quest to encourage people, eat healthier, make sure you change your diet, stick to it. You know, your life is really important and life is really Absolutely. Fragile. People are passing away like crazy nowadays. Yes. They're younger and younger. Yeah, you know, it's so it's crazy. important. But I thank you so much for calling in, uh, you know, and talking to us and hanging out with us for a little bit. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody that showed me love, that, you know, follow me. Um, my name is Raquel Miller. Again, you can follow me on Instagram at ms.raquelmiller. 
Miller. You can find me on Facebook under Raquel Miller. You know, follow my nonprofit organization, Ladies in Power. We're definitely doing great things. Have a athletic line, Pretty Beast Athleisure. So we just doing great things. We're encouraging. We're building. And I promise you this year I'm going to be a world champion. So keep your eyes out for me. And I believe that. I believe that. And Larry, and thank you so much for having me. Power Hour, what's up? Definitely. Pretty Beast is out here, baby. <laughs> keep it locked in right here at the Power Hour, 101.3 Jams.